And this is Richard Miles with Board Game Authority. And our video today is going to be about how to spruce up a Kickstarter campaign page. Spruce up isn't the exact right word. It's really about how to uh, present your Kickstarter campaign page, uh, make it appealing so that users will want to share it uh, more so that you can get more more visitors and therefore more backers. Uh, but before we get to the video, uh, I do need to take a moment and say please check out Restless Entropy Games and their upcoming game Armor in Ash. Uh, and now let's get into the video. Today we're going to look at Fidget Cube, which is clearly not a board game. But the campaign is doing a lot of things right, and I want to go over how well their campaign page is put together. The first thing uh, that it's doing is saying, hey, we're going to offer free shipping on two cubes or more. Free U.S. shipping on orders of two cubes or more. Okay, what is this doing for this project? Okay, their main pledge level is $19. That's for one fidget cube. And on with this... You're going to have to pay shipping. They're pushing people to their their up tier. They want one up from from their base and they're probably making a lot more money because they're they're taking in more money, right? Um we got we got 15,248 backers that are getting two. Uh 17,847 are getting one. But 15,000 15,000 people are uh, you know are are getting two. You need to understand like the the power that's going on here, the psychology behind, um, like the driving force of free U.S. shipping on orders of two or more cubes. That's really pushing people to that um, that higher pledge tier for this campaign. It's a super clever tactic that they're that they're doing. And then uh, you know free worldwide shipping on orders of five. So anywhere else in the world which has you know higher shipping uh, from the U.S. If you order five, you're you're going to get free shipping. So that that's pretty cool. Um, it's got a few uh, you know animated gifs here. So that's that uh, just of how it works. That's pretty cool. Um, but but here here's where it starts uh, getting getting kind of awesome in my opinion um, and awesome from a uh, like page how the page is set up how what it's geared to do how it's going to perform uh, from that perspective. So the first thing is click here for press materials and that's just kind of that's the first that's one of the first things on the page, right? So it's super easy for people to um, promote this campaign. And so that's one thing that I, a lot of uh, board game creators kind of forget. A lot of board game creators put this whole share thing like way down at the bottom of their campaign, like way, way down at the bottom. Uh, they'll they will put some kind of sharing thing and it's not like click here for press materials it's a hey here's an avatar right which here's an avatar which doesn't tell anybody if they haven't seen your game what the game is right because it's just a it's just a, a drawn face or a drawn something it's an illustrated something that doesn't say the game name it doesn't say this this project is on kickstarter it doesn't say anything about it it's for for me, whenever I see those, I'm like, oh, okay, well, somebody's got a new game out, but it doesn't tell me what the game is, so I can't follow up. I can't follow through, even if the art looks cool. But here, click for press materials. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. It's a Dropbox link, and so they have their GIFs. They have their images. They have their videos. You can get all these GIFs. They look good. So that's another thing is not only is it easy to share that they have, have these kind of um, sectioned off in, in images, videos, GIFs, and they're they're easy to share. But they look nice. This is something that I wouldn't mind sharing on my web page. And in fact, I am right. I'm making a video about it because it looks so good. These are really nice shots. And so uh, the two things that are going on here: uh, one is it's easy to share, but number two is people will actually want to share this because it looks good. So in addition to having good art or good graphic design or good whatever. You have to present it in a manner that shows it off well. It has to look appealing to people so that they will want to share it. So that's the two things that are going on here. So the first thing, click here for press materials. Super awesome. That's like A plus for these guys. Like like their campaign uh, is easy to share and therefore they're at $1.4 million. I'm not saying that making it easy to share is going to make you a million dollars. I'm saying it's going to make you a lot more money 
than or uh, give you a lot more pledges and backers than if you didn't have this front and center. And that's before they get into anything, right? They have a little bit here. What is a fidget cube? Fidget cube is a desk toy for anyone who likes to fidget. Who likes to? Do, do people like to fidget? Anyway, uh, and, and it shows it off. But then it gets right into like, here, share this. Share this campaign. That is awesome. And then here's some more stuff. 30 seconds of your time could make the difference in growing the fidget cube community. Man, it's, it's actively the first things that people see on this campaign is please share this campaign. And so we have these very nice, clean-looking uh, share buttons. This one's for Facebook. Look at this. Tag a friend who can't stop fidgeting. All right, apply that to board games. All right, tag a friend who loves worker placement games. Tag a friend who loves miniature games. Right, tag a friend who likes light card games, whatever. This is a blueprint. These, the, this $1.4 million campaign, use it as a blueprint for success. Um, like that is what it's really what you should do. If you're thinking about running a Kickstarter, um, you know, find a successful campaign, identify what it's doing well, and uh, you know, mimic that for your own ends. That like that that's the that's the blueprint for success. And you know, follow something else that's successful. Do mimic and do what they do. So in here we have uh it's a great clean looking they're big banners big buttons and the you know the whole thing is linked and it's it's great tag a friend who can't stop fidgeting uh and then for twitter don't keep fidget cube a secret right that's not that's not the exact weight as tag a friend who can't stop fidgeting because man that's personal that's like oh i bet jeff or mindy or cindy or whatever could use it right this this is not exactly the same but it's still it's still pretty big and still uh, gets the message across here's another one share with your favorite subreddit sub like the board game subreddit is pretty big and I rarely rarely have I seen anything about like hey promote me on reddit which you know self promotions a little iffy on reddit or, um, but this is, this is not asking this is not self promotion this is asking you to promote them you, you know so it's not not exactly self-promotion, but uh, I don't know what our Reddit folks feel about you know this kind of this kind of uh, like advertised promotion or whatever. But here it is, and 1.4 million dollars doesn't lie. These things work. These things work. So that is the the meat of this video. That this area right here for them. Before you get into the campaign, we can we can we can scroll down and look at the campaign, and it's it's a great looking campaign. But right here, this is, and they know this, right? They know this. This is where they're making all their money. This is how it's bringing people to the campaign. It's sharing it to people who would not otherwise know about it. This is the money, okay? All of this is just how it works, which is getting people who are on the page to buy. But this, this is the important stuff, and they know that, and so they put it up front as uh, Kickstarter creators. We, this is what we need to remember. All of this stuff, how do, how do I use it? And then these the great images here, uh, animated GIFs, like these are great and they really you know, sell the product and it's, it's necessary to sell your product. But I think most Kickstarter creators uh, that I've seen in, in the board game, uh, the ones that actually succeed, that is, they know how to sell their product, right? They know how to put nice looking images of the of the game and play of the box you know they get third party reviews and all that kind of stuff so so that part is is great but this this part it comes i don't want to say as an afterthought but it, it's not front and center it's not the first thing that people see it's usually way down on the page uh so so we'll real quickly uh look look at the the rest of this page Super clean. Look at all this clean. The colors are really popping out. You know, they're not using the same color for every single one of these. They're, they're, all the colors just kind of pop out. Here's some more GIFs that show you the, all the colors that it's available in. These are really, really great images. Like this type of image, like like this type, it's, it's the item in uh, a stack of pencils. And this is the item with like, I don't know, is that a sunflower? I don't know. It doesn't kind of look like one. I don't know. But it's a, a flower background okay i've seen some really great images of board games on like um you know like on a tree trunk or like a mossy covered little mound or whatever 
those images they look awesome and they stand out because it's not just your your product shot on a white background or black background um, it really sets the product apart uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna name drop here real quick but only because uh, the images that uh, are produced by this guy are really really good uh, and that is I slay the dragon and so uh, these guys do phenomenal phenomenal shots um, let's go to their to Instagram I guess look at these product shots what's this game uh, I don't know that one but these images while while not in the type that I was talking about like the, the the game box on a tree trunk or something like that which is actually really cool but this is another way to present your product in a way that it's not normally seen this is a very like artsy you know looking um, it's it's not practical to set up your game like this right so these guys really really show show off the product really well in a very unique manner and I would highly suggest if you can doing something similar because man it just it just looks really well and people people want to share this this is the type of of uh, product showcasing in Castles of Burgundy here I really like this game uh, this is the type of, of showcasing that, that people actually want to share so back to the Kickstarter page These images really really working for for this product and there's a lot of them right there's a, there's a lot of just it's just images here you go a bunch of images there's nothing about how the product works what it does for you why you should back nothing it's just the awesome product images it's up to the the viewer to say man that looks awesome and and they're selling it as a hey that looks awesome type thing right if you present your product in in a way that looks super appealing like the images because it's the internet and the images are are uh, really what what we go by the images are gonna sell it for you but as you keep going uh, you know then it is gonna say like why fidget why all this stuff and it links to all these articles that say how awesome fidgeting is uh, here's a huge back button right here I do not see this I, I don't see this on any board game products uh, projects that I have backed and that is right here I don't even know what that does what does that do okay so that that takes you to to this page which is actually pretty awesome I didn't I didn't uh, you know usually I click on a reward so I'm already um, uh, my rewards already in but but what that did was uh, was just I guess duplicate this back this project button and they did it right here that is awesome so if I'm scrolling and I'm reading boom it's right here how awesome is that this is like I, I just don't see it this is just another thing that can um, you can duplicate and that's put these back this project buttons you can put those after every section right if I'm reading and I see and I'm like yep okay I'm sold I don't want to have to go find it. if you can just put it right here and as I'm reading it's right there I can just click on it and go and so much easier and and by easy I know everybody's like oh well it's right up here they can just go that that the thing that that um, I don't want to get into a lot because they're board game designers they're not thinking about website conversion and all that sort of thing but for a Kickstarter page and for website sales and all that kind of stuff you need to think about conversion and the uh, easier that you make it for somebody to convert in this case putting this back button here versus making me click on it over here even if it's a fractional lift in conversion multiply that out by how long the campaign runs and how many people are viewing the campaign that's gonna equal more backers it is that's the bottom line it will equal more backers to do um, just little hacks like this inside your campaign page and it's easy to do so let, let's let's continue down though um, so now it's talking about the product and what it can do and again this image links to um, oh, well, let's see where it links it links it links to to the back right so that's one thing that, that that the board game Kickstarters I don't see that I see I see a lot of um, links to board game geek page which is good 
and I can't take a, well, away from that. I'm not trying to take away from that because the links to the Board Game Geek page is going to fuel your campaign in another way, and that's making people on Board Game Geek, uh, which is like the community, right? Uh, it's going to make make those individuals more aware of your product and or your project, both, and and that will get more eyeballs, more visits to your page, and that's what you want. Um, but can you do both? Yes, and I think you should. Then we start reading, reading more about it, and it's just, it's just really good sales copy. This belongs on any desk, uh, from a student to a CEO, right? Like, so it's basically saying, this is for everybody. Do you watch Netflix? Sure, everybody does. This is perfect for you. So it's, it's really hitting on people. Hitting on people, that sounds... It's really... <laughs> uh, it, it's really kind of tugging on people's emotions, which is what good product copy does, right? It, it's a, it, people buy for emotional reasons. Really great. This image is also linked to the to the back page. So they're linking all of their images to the to the back the project button, which is super smart because lots of people, whether it is conscious or not, um, inadvertently or purposeful, they click on images for a living. I do click studies, click track studies for websites and things of that to improve website conversion. Uh, I'm an optimization and conversion expert. And so I can tell you uh, because I uh, have click tracking software installed on websites. Uh, I've, I've ran test labs where there are two way mirrors and there are awesome infrared cameras uh, attached to uh, computer monitors that pick up eyeball movements. So we can uh, overlay that of the video of the the user session and we can see exactly where their eyeballs are looking and map that with their click tracks and their mouse trails and all that super whatever science geeky kind of whatever but i can tell you that people click on images they click on static images they click on you know images that actually are linked places but they click on images and so what's happening here is i may or may not want to back this product our uh, project but I may want to see this image in more detail. And so when I see the mouse change, when I see I'm, I'm, I'm reading, and some people read with their, with their mouse cursor, right? Or, or they have it very close to where they're reading. But I hover my mouse cursor over this image, and my mouse cursor changes from, um, from the arrow or the uh, bo um, text bar or whatever icon um, to a hand that signifies when I click something's going to happen. Right. Normally, I th I think, or most people, it seems, think that uh, that means it's going to make the image bigger. It's going to it's going to uh, blow up the image and bigger the image, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I'm going to be able to see it in more detail. Well, in this case, that's not what's happening. But you're you're tricking the customer a little bit, or, or the potential customer, into going one step down the sales funnel to getting you on that buy page. And so, uh, if you're reading everything, and you may you may back out. You may not want to. You may say, I'm going to look at this later. But you clicked on this image wanting to see it in more detail. And now you're on the, on the hey, how much do you want to um, pledge for this product? You're one step closer and it's easier to just click that button at that point uh, than coming back here and clicking the back. Like you've already taken a step down here. Uh, it just goes on to like just sell the product a little bit more. Hey, I already have a pin. Do I really need this? And you could say that about, oh, I already have you know, this type of game or that type of game. Do I need another one that's like that? And for me, the answer is always yes, right? Uh, I already have a dungeon crawler. Do I need another one? Yes, I will buy every dungeon crawler that's ever put out, ever, because I love dungeon crawlers. I love them. I love them so much that I buy them, and half of them I don't even play, but I can't live without them. My life is not complete without them. So, um, but anyway, this just kind of kind of sells a little bit more. Uh, nice graphs, graph, uh, graph and graphic that also goes to the um, to to the to the back of the project now, and then just just more selling, more selling. Hey, I, do I actually need this? And yeah, of course you do. In red, woo! Now that. That stands out. There's a lot of studies about red, but uh, we don't have time to get into them. But red catches your eye. Delivery before Christmas. Man, so this is really tugging on people here. So not only uh, are they trying to, uh, you know, obviously sell, sell this product, but now they're saying get your shopping done early. 
So now this isn't a product for yourself. Now they're selling it as a gift. You can give this to someone. And I know that's, whoa, of course I can. I always knew that. But people need to be told this kind of stuff. It just reinforces their thoughts and solidifies them and makes them click that button, right? That's that's the goal. And so what they've done here is just put it in your face. Hey, if you if you back it now, if you had any doubts or worries about getting this in time for the holidays, we will deliver it before Christmas. It spells that out right here. That is awesome. And it, it's in red. You can't get past this. And then again, back this project. Like that's the second button. We're going to scroll up and find that button again. There it is. Okay. They're putting this all the way through their campaign. I highly suggest that. That this this shouldn't be groundbreaking stuff, but I have never seen this in a board game. And you can, you know, show me um you know board game projects that have this and I will gladly eat my words or whatever. But in my experience, this doesn't happen. And and if it does, it's few and far in between. Here's the next thing, and this is this is really good. They have the share buttons duplicated, but the text is a little different. So if you didn't share it above, and now you've scroll, you've uh, you know you're scrolling down the page, you've read about it and everything, and now you're like, oh, okay, now I get it. I actually like this this campaign or this project. And here it is again. It's right here for you if you've made it this far. Now you can share. Now you have time to share. If you if you didn't want to share at the beginning, here it is again. And now the message is different. Now instead of you know tag a friend, it's tell the world about the fidget cube. That's pretty awesome. And so as a board game, you know, designer, project creator, um, Kickstarter project creator, it's easy to have your blinders on and live in that whole board game, you know, subculture, little niche and not, like not not ever leave it. And when you do that, you're not finding these these ideas. And I don't want to call them innovative because they're, they're not. This is this is standard stuff for, for a lot of a lot of sites, but in the board game space, I don't see a lot of this as being standard. You know, these just catchy, popping images, right? Look at successful projects, regardless of if they're in the board game space, and see what you can learn. That's that's the message here. This has been Richard Miles for Board Game Authority. Until next time, game on.